Welcome back to Mr. Ace Math. Uh, this lesson is on applying proportions. Some stuff you should know before you begin this lesson are ratios, proportions, how to solve proportions. That's very important, knowing the procedures actually uh, mathematically solve the proportion, and how to create equivalent fractions. So make sure you know those, and let's get started. Setting up proportions. When you're setting up proportions, you have to make sure that you have the same units on the top and the bottom of each side of the proportion. For example, if one side of the proportion has miles per hour, then the other side of the proportion should also have miles per hour. Both of them have miles on top, both of them have hours on the bottom. If we have feet per second, then the other side of the proportion should also be feet per second. If we have miles per gallon, then the other side of the proportion should also have miles per gallon. And if we have dollars per pound, the other side of the proportion should also have dollars per pound. For example, if you buy 18 roses for $22.50, how much will 24 roses cost? Well, how would we set our proportion up? Remember, a proportion is when you set two ratios equal to each other. Our first ratio, we're talking about the cost for a certain number of roses. Well, we have to make sure that when we set our proportion up, the other side of the proportion has the same unit set up the same way. In other words, it's going to have dollars on top and roses on the bottom. So what do we know? We know that we have 18 roses, and the 18 roses cost $22.50. So for 18 roses, that's going to be on the bottom, we pay $22.50, and that goes on top. So we'll have $22.50 for 18 roses. This is our first ratio. How much do we pay for 18 roses? We pay $22.50. Now the other side will have to set up the same way, but we're missing something. We're trying to find the cost. We have the number of roses. So when we plug our number in, we're going to plug 24 in for the top or the bottom. What do you think? Well, we're talking about the roses, so it has to be the bottom, which means that we're going to have to put a variable in for our numerator. So that's going to be C over 24. It's also really important to try and choose a variable that actually applies to the problem. For example, here we showed the variable C. C stands for cost. Now that we have our proportions set up, and this is why I said you should know how to solve proportions, we have to follow the two-step process to solve. The first step is to cross multiply, so let's do just that. We'll multiply 18 times C, and that's pretty straightforward, that's going to be 18C. We then multiply 2250 times 24, and that gives us 540. So now we have 18C equals 540. That's step one of solving the proportion. Now step two is to try and get the cost of variable C by itself. Well, how do we do that? We have to get the variable alone by dividing both sides by 18. When we divide this side by 18, when we divide 18C by 18, what happens is those cancel out. And then we've got 540 divided by 18. That gives us C equals 30. Now, it's really important that when you're solving word problems using proportions, you take your answer, the number, and you plug it back into what the question was asking you. Here we're talking about the cost of 24 roses. What we found was C, the cost. So let's plug that back in, to, in terms of the problem. So the cost of 24 roses is $30. So let's take a look at this example. It says you buy eight apples for $4. How many apples can you get for $14? Well, we know that we paid $4 for 8 apples. And we know that we're going to be talking about dollars per apple. And that's our first ratio. The cost in dollars for however many apples. So since the left side of the proportion is going to be dollars per apples, the right side is going to be set up the same exact way. The other side is also going to be dollars per apples. Well, what do we know? Like we said before, we know that we bought 8 apples. And for those eight apples, we paid $4. So that's our very first ratio, $4 for eight apples. Set up exactly the way that we said we were going to set it up with the dollars on top and the apples on the bottom. So the other side is going to be set up the same way. But the thing is, we're missing something. We're missing information. We're looking for the number of apples. We know that we paid 14 So we know that we paid $14. So we'll have the top. And the bottom is going to be represented by a variable. 
So we're going to have it as $14 over A. Now, A is the ideal choice of a variable because we're talking about apples, A for apples. So now that we have our proportion set up, we just have to solve it mathematically. Now, in order to solve it mathematically, we have to cross multiply. And the first thing we're going to do is multiply 8 times 14. That's going to give us 112. And then multiply the other ones, which is 4 times A, which gives us 4A. So we have 112 equals 4A. Now, just like any other proportion, we need to try and get the variable A by itself. So, divide both sides by 4. This is going to allow us to cancel out the 4s, leaving A by itself. And then we just have 112 divided by 4, and that gives us our answer, which is A is 28. And just like with the last example, we should take our number and plug it back into the word problem. What were we talking about first place? What was the question we were being asked? We were being asked, how many apples can you get for $14? So, how many apples can we get with $14? You can get 28 apples for $14. Okay, take a look at this example. It says, if you travel 200 miles in 8 hours, then how many miles can you travel in 10 hours? We're talking about traveling in however many miles for a certain number of hours. So, our ratio is miles per hour. And now, because the left side of the proportion is set up as miles per hour, we have to make sure that the right side is set up the same exact way. So here, we're also going to have miles per hour. Well, what do we know? We know that we can travel 200 miles in 8 hours. So let's set that side up. We'll have 200 miles in 8 hours. That's going to be 200 over 8 because it's 200 miles. Miles goes on top. And we have 8 hours. 8 goes on the bottom. So that's our first ratio. So what exactly are we trying to find? Well, we're trying to find out how many miles we can travel in 10 hours. So what we have is the number of hours. We have the denominator, which is going to be 10. What we don't have is the number of miles. So we'll set this side up as m over 10. And remember, it's always good to choose the best variable for the question. Here, what we're missing is miles, so we're going to actually leave the variable as m, m for miles. So now that we have our proportion, what do we do next? Well, like we said before, same exact thing as before, we have to solve it mathematically, and there's two steps to doing this. The first is to cross multiply. So we're going to multiply 8 times m, that gives us 8m. And then we multiply 200 times 10, that will give us 2000. So we have 8m equals 2000. Now the second step is to try to get the variable by itself. In order to get the variable by itself, we need to divide both sides by 8. So the 8s are going to cancel, so now I'll have m by itself, the variable m alone m equals 2,000 divided by 8, which is going to give us 250. So m equals 250. And just like with the last example, it's good to take the answer that we got and plug it back into what we were talking about in our word problem. We're talking about miles per hour, traveling a certain number of miles in a certain number of hours. Well, we're saying how many miles can we travel? How many miles can you travel in 10 hours? Well, we got the answer is m is 250, so our answer is you can travel 250 miles in 10 hours. And for this example, we're saying Jake's heart rate is 20 beats per 15 seconds. How many beats does Jake's heart beat per minute? This one's a little bit difficult because we don't have the same units in both parts of the question. Here's what I mean. What do we have? We're talking about the number of heartbeats that Jake has for a certain number of seconds. So we're talking about beats per second. And because the left side of the proportion is beats per second, the right side is also going to have to be beats per second. So what do we know? We know Jake's heart rate is 20 beats per 15 seconds. So the top of our proportion talks about beats. The bottom of our proportion talks about seconds. So we'll plug that in, 20 over 15. So 20 talks about the beats, and 15 talks about the number of seconds. Now the right side has to match the left side. But we're asking, how many beats does Jake's heart beat per minute? Well, it tells us here minute. But what we're talking about in our proportion is the number of seconds. So what are we really looking for? If we're talking about the number of beats per minute, well, how many seconds are in a minute? That would be 60 seconds. So what we're really saying is, how many beats is it for 60 seconds? So let's plug that in. We've got B over 60. Well, again, why did we put in 60 instead of uh, 1? Because we're talking about 1 minute. Again, because you have to make sure that the bottoms of your proportions talk about the same thing and use the same units. So, now that I have my proportion, 
what do I do? I try to solve it mathematically. Remember, there's two steps. The first step is to cross multiply. I've got 15 times B, that's going to give me 15B. And I've got 20 times 60, and that's going to give me 1,200. So now, what do I do? I have to get B by itself. In order to get B by itself, I have to divide both sides by 15. When I do that, the 15s cancel out. I'm left with 1,200 divided by 15. Well, what's 1,200 divided by 15? That's going to give me 80. So B equals 80. Again, let's relate that back to the word problem. In the word problem, we're asking, how many beats does Jake's heart beat per minute? Well, since B is 80, what we're really saying is Jake's heart rate is 80 beats per minute. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. When you're done, unpause the video. After a 3, 2, 1 countdown, your answer will be displayed. Go. Okay, so since there's only two questions, let's go over these one at a time, starting with number one. Number one says, Bobby receives 30 votes in a class election. He won against Jimmy by a ratio of 5 to 4. How many votes did Jimmy get? So we know that Bobby receives 30 votes in that class election. What we're talking about is the ratio of Bobby's votes to the number of Jimmy's votes. So let's set that side of the proportion up. So it's going to be Bobby's votes over Jimmy's votes. Now, because this side of the proportion is Bobby's votes over Jimmy's votes, we have to make sure the other side of the proportion looks exactly the same. So we'll set that up as Bobby's votes over Jimmy's votes. Now, what we know about Bobby's votes is that there's 30 of them. So he got 30 votes. What do we know about Jimmy's votes? We don't know how many votes Jimmy's received yet. And that's what we're trying to find. So when we set this side of the proportion up, we know Bobby's got 30 votes and Jimmy, we don't know yet. So what's the best variable to use? J for Jimmy. So we've got 30 over J equals, well, what? What other information do we have? We do have the information that says that he won against Jimmy by a ratio of 5 to 4. So 5 is going to represent the number of votes that Bobby got, and 4 is going to represent the number of votes that Jimmy got. So let's plug those in. So now we've got 30 over J equals 5 over 4. We have our proportion set up, and all we need to do is solve for J. Well, how do we do that? Remember, there's two steps to solving proportions. Step one is to cross multiply, so let's do that. We've got five times j, that gives us five j, and we've got 30 times four, that gives us 120. How do we get j alone? Well, we divide both sides by five, the fives cancel, and j equals 24. Now let's plug that back into what we were talking about. What are we being asked in the question? We're being asked, how many votes did Jimmy get? Well, we said j equals 24, therefore, Jimmy received 24 votes. In this one, there are 918 students and 27 teachers in a school. Five new teachers are added to the faculty. In order to maintain the same student-to-teacher ratio, how many new students must attend the school? Well, how do we set this proportion up? What are we talking about in the question? We're talking about the ratio of students to teachers. Okay, the top of our ratio talks about students and the bottom talks about teachers. Therefore, the other side of our proportion should be the same thing, student to teacher. Now, how many students do we have in the school? We said we had 918 students. And how many teachers? 27. So that information we plug into the first side, to the left side of our proportion. So the ratio of students to teachers is 918 to 27. Well, what are we trying to do? We're trying to see how we can maintain the same ratio by adding a certain number of students. It says five new teachers are added. So for every five teachers, how many students are there? Well, let's try and figure that out. The left side of our proportion says 918 over 27. The right side is K over five. Normally I select a variable that's easier to relate to the question, but I try to stay away from using S as a variable because S kind of looks like the number five. So I chose K for kid. Kid, student, same thing. So we've got students to teachers. We don't know the number of students it takes to maintain the same student to teacher ratio. But now we've got our proportion set up. And now that we've got the proportion set up, there's two steps, cross multiply and divide. So let's cross multiply. We've got 27 times K, that gives us 27K. And we've got 918 times five, and that gives us 4,590. 
Now, how do we get k by itself? We have to divide both sides by whatever's in front of k, which is 27. So we'll divide both sides by 27. The 27s are going to cancel, and that leaves me with k alone. k equals 4,590 divided by 27, and that gives me 170. But again, we have to relate that to the question. k represents the number of students that we have for every five teachers. So there must be 170 new students to maintain the student-to-teacher ratio. Reflection. A pair of equivalent ratios is called a proportion. Proportions are normally shown as fractions. How many steps are used when solving proportions? Well, there's two. The first step is to cross multiply. The second step is to divide. You must divide by the number that is located, very, very important, directly in front of the variable. When setting up a proportion, what must happen to the top and the bottom of the ratio? The top units, the numerators, have to match, and the bottom units or denominators also have to match. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Questions? Comments? Leave them down below. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.